Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series, facilitated by renowned educators. ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. And so, uh, again, all we've done is we've just identified that, uh, that, um, that pattern playing into that resistance level and established it as a, uh, as a double top. Now, what, what was also happening, of course, the momentum as we were playing into these higher highs was dropping. Uh, the same was going uh, with the RSI, uh, sorry, with the MACD. We saw the MACD cross down, and then, of course, we had that break uh, below that pivot point. Continuation patterns are, uh, are a little bit of a different story. What we see is a pause in a prevailing trend. It takes a lot less time to form than a reversal pattern. It pauses on lighter volume, and this is something that we've been seeing in the uh, in the bigger picture markets when we look at the S and P. And again, something to be cautious of, and and lends uh, credibility to the probability of a break towards lower lows. And then, of course, as that trend uh, resumes, we see more more uh, trading activity and higher volume in the direction that uh, that the trade has resumed. We've got a number of different patterns that we look at: triangles, wedges, flags, and pennants. What we're really going to look at is an inclining wedge here, which uh, is the first of them, which uh, we have a falling market. We have a rally into a resistance, uh, sort of leading people to believe that it's going to be a continuation uh, or a reversal. We have a pullback and then another continuation. But what we see happening as we move forward is that our highs are getting uh, higher, um, but, but our lows are getting higher faster, if that makes any sense. So the, um, the, the moves are not correlating with one another, and you generally will see some signals on our, uh, on our lower indicators um, supporting the, um, you know, the, the, uh, the probability that this is just a false sort of breakout. And again, that's something that we want to look at before we actually um, commit ourselves in any sort of direction. Declining wedge, we have our rising market, we have a pullback down to uh, off of a resistance down into a support, a rally, a break below. It almost kind of brings people in thinking that the market's going to sell off. We create that wedge-like pattern, and then the price breaks out. We have increasing volume, and that's generally some more supported by a, a continuation of momentum. So let's look at the CDD once again, guys, before we wrap up and, and just sort of uh, show you how we're putting this all together from a, uh, from a pattern identification perspective. What we see here is a market rallying, and we see that we've, we're actually rejecting making some lower highs. At the same time, we can see that our lows are not quite getting as low as fast, and we could step back and establish that what we appear to be forming here is a declining wedge suggesting the possibility of a continuation uh, to the upside. Now, what is supporting that, although the trade entry has not been established, is the idea that down on our price or on our off, our lower indicators here, okay, we have a break above that 50% uh, level here, suggesting that we're building momentum to the upside, and we have our histogram suggesting again that 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 lower low that was made is not quite supported by the rest of the uh, by the rest of the market and so we've now started building a case for the probability of a of a break to the upside at, at, at least if not the start of a new uptrend at least to to see a play uh into these key um, key pivots or key resistance levels over the next uh, over the next uh, intermediate uh, time frame and uh, and of course, uh, with a break of our pivot, we play into that first target and then uh, move into our uh, second target. Now, guys, what I want to reinforce here is like, again, we're we're sort of running short on uh, time. Is you really do need to simplify your approach. It doesn't have to be rocket science. Uh, you really do want to make sure that uh, that you're you're more or less creating a checklist in the sense that uh, every time you step up to the plate in terms of analyzing a price chart, whether it's your ISCFX options, pair values, or any other uh, equity or, or, uh, or ETF or index, 
you want to establish a, um, a, a checklist for yourself. Create a directional bias, and it doesn't matter whether it's based on your pattern identification, MACD crossover, break above the 50% uh, the, uh, line on the RSI. doesn't matter. Uh, the bottom line is what you really do want to establish is a directional bias. And from there, you can start building a case. And that might be uh, establishing that pattern. It might be looking at your lower indica indicators, but you do not have to start in one specific area. Um, there's no set um, there's no set process. You're going to start somewhere, and you're going to build that case. And you're going to look at everything so that ultimately, in the end, uh, what you're left with is the price action signaling your entry. So although all these things are in place, pattern identification, MACD, RSI, everything supporting a move to the upside, that price action has to commit to that higher level, that break above the pivot, in order for us and for you to be confident that a continuation to that next target level is a, is a high probability. Always remembering, guys, that, again, the market's the great humiliator. Never take every, anything at gospel. Um, you know, recognize that you should always be uh, protecting yourself to the downside uh, should, the, should the market go, uh, go against you. So try not to overcomplicate things when you're looking at these price charts. Try not to um, see what's there, even if you have a, uh, what's not there, even if you have a bigger picture outlook. The one thing that you can take away from, if not a lot of things, from our uh, market outlooks that we do with the ISC uh, every week is that although we may have a bigger picture thesis on the U.S. dollar, for example, we're always being, um, being open-minded and just letting the price chart tell the story. And that's why we say, although bigger picture, we may think upside, this week, look for a pullback. Or this week, look for the probability of a continuation. Those of you that are long, a break below here means it's time to you know, uh, rethink your approach. The fact is you always have a plan in place to, uh, in, in, case you're, uh, in case you're wrong. And don't rush into the trade. Um, you know, get used to looking at these, these uh, price charts or these pair value charts. Again, they're available through most of your ma major uh, brokers. Uh, um, I'll, there's a slide at the end here that, uh, that where we'll uh, reference where you can find them if you don't have access to a broker. But the fact is spend some time um, you know, watching these charts and establishing these key support and resistance levels and try to create a mechanical approach so that um, your trading really becomes uh, not so much emotional but more uh, uh, reactional to what the uh, what the price chart is telling you, and just you know practice. Get in there, spend some time looking at these charts. Use uh, you know there's a lot of um, uh, of um, brokers that have some great simulated charting software. You can actually go in and buy calls on the CDD, buy puts on the CDD, the EUI, what have you, in order to uh, trade your outlook and just see how the dynamics of this market works so that you can more effectively take this to your live uh, market outlook and uh, get in there and actually start uh, placing some live, uh, some live trades. So, uh, guys, the ISC has got some great uh, uh, guests in line over the next uh, over the next couple of months. Uh, you can see here just a quick snapshot of some of the uh, uh, fantastic guests that they have on board with Array. Uh, you know, Steve is going to sort of. Uh, I know they send emails out to everybody on a regular basis. But keep in mind that uh, on a weekly basis, I mean, uh, these are some of the topics that, uh, that uh, Steve uh, discusses with uh, various guests. And so if you want to learn more, I know my name pops up there on occasion, with it, which I'm always uh, happy to be part of. But there's a lot of different ide ideas and outlooks uh, uh, that cross the, uh, cross the wire on a regular basis. So it's a great way for you to kind of feel this market out and establish your own sort of uh, uh, approach based on professional, uh, you know, the different professional uh, opinion. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.